And today I'm here with Miss Jordan Spice. Hello. Hi, pretty girl. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm good. Are you in a good place? Are you happy right now? I am in a great place. I'm very happy right now. Well, you should be happy because yes. your album right yes. here, right now, is in stores mm -hmm. and on iTunes. Yes. If you're all about that digital life. Yes, digital life. Or if you want to go to Target, you can go get it there too. Physical copies. I love physical copies. I love being able to hold like the insert in my hand. Right, and, look and looking it. through the credits. Because mm -hmm. like nowadays, like you don't even really get a chance to see the credits unless like somebody from the label sends you like a digital. Right. Well, I mean, digital copies, you get the album booklet, but nobody really thinks to Looks, look at it, you know? Right. But um, I do both. I like to get a physical copy and a digital copy. Yes, and it's been six years. Yes. How does it feel to be back? Ah, it feels it feels really good. I well, I never really left. I was able to do other things. Right. I got to do Broadway, Broadway. Got to do Sparkle and Meet Whitney, and that was absolutely incredible. But it wasn't for lack of trying to put music out. Um, it seemed like every monkey wrench that could have been thrown into a plan kind of got thrown in. And in the middle of it, it was really frustrating. But when I look back at it, I'm just kind of like, okay, I see. I see the plan, like I see the path that I had to take because I had to grow and I yeah. had to learn and um, experience some things and now everything is reflected in the album. You, know, you can hear the growth, you can hear the maturity, you can hear the different emotions that are on the album. But um, I've been saying that the music has been coming for so long and now it's here. Yeah. And it's a little overwhelming and exciting at the same time. So it's good, it's good. Um, yeah, because I mean, I feel like we've basically gotten to see you grow up. I mean, yeah. we Idol, like uh, we were on Idol, you were 17. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you were a kid. Yes. Um, yes. Now you're a grown ass woman, <laughs> right? But we've seen your progression. Thank you. Over these past few years. Mm -hmm. How is Jordan different from the, the Jordan that we wow. got a chance to meet so many years ago? Well, I still feel like I'm the quirky girl that walked into the audition room. Big curly hair and the big smile. And I still love to sing and I love to make people laugh. But I feel like. Me now, I feel like I'm coming into my own as a woman and artistically and just as a person. Um, but like, you know, learning different things like what I like, what I don't like, um, how to handle things, situation, people, what I'm willing to put up with, what I'm not. And no is a complete sentence. Like, I don't have to explain myself. Like, no. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> And I, I'm glad because I feel like we're getting a chance to get to know you. Yeah. Because I think obviously when you're younger, it's like people want you to be in this very like cookie cutter box yeah. and Which I can don't understand. want yeah. you to like say too many things. You can't really be yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I think now that people are getting to identify with who Jordan Sparks really is, which makes you more relatable. So thank you. Oh, I'm so glad. When you're singing Boys in the Hood, I <laughs> can totally, you know, relate to you. And yes. Like, yes, girl, I feel you. Thank you. It's it's been really crazy, actually. You know, um, because I was 17 on Idol. You know, literally, I don't know a different life yeah. than, than being in the spotlight and everybody kind of knowing all the business and you know everything like that. But I do feel like I've just been able to. As crazy as it's been, I still have been able to have like a normal life. Like I can still go to the grocery store and go grocery shopping and I don't yeah. have to worry about, you know, 50 people being outside. Even though if that happened, I would figure out a way to deal with it too. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I do feel like I've just, the growth has just naturally happened. Like I feel like I haven't had to like force people to see that I've grown up. It just has kind of, it's just happened. Navigating through fame, what is like one thing that being famous has taught you about yourself? Oh, about myself? Uh, patience. <laughs> patience is a virtue, you know. Um, I love meeting my fans and I love being able to see people who want to take pictures and do all those things, but there are definitely those days where like, I'm just like, please don't let anybody see yeah, me today. I look a mess, my hair is not messed yeah. up, I got a headache. I don't and like, good. it's funny because I wish I could go incognito, but it tends to draw more attention to me because um. I'm already tall and when I smile, People are like, is that like they they look and they wonder. I know that girl. Yeah. So it's not that I don't love meeting my fans. It's just there are some days where either I'm exhausted or it's just like I I don't know if I have the capacity. Lord Jesus, help me today. I don't know if I have the capacity to be nice. Like yeah. And I I do for the most part. I've I I'm I'm hoping. I hope that I've been nice all the time. Uh, it's been eight years and I think I've done okay. Um, but I think patience is definitely something that it's made me learn and also just in general with 
the album, having to have worked on it for six years yeah. and to have been, you know, when you pray and sometimes it's yes or no or wait and it was wait for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And so being able to just be like, okay, it's gonna happen when the timing is right because timing is everything and I'm a firm believer in that now. yeah like it's just it will not listen like, God will not let something happen if it's not right for you in yes. your life at that moment yep and Trust he totally me. did so like when I looked like I said when I look back on the past six years I'm like okay I see I see why I had to go through that I get it how awesome is it working with Salam Remy because he doesn't work with a lot of people like I he keeps his circle very very tight, tight. yes um Man, so we met because he scored Sparkle, he mm -hmm. scored the film, and um, he was like, okay, well, let's do something so we can maybe add something different to the soundtrack. So we were writing songs together and doing things like that, and I didn't realize what like a legend or icon in his own right, you know, yeah. being in the game for so long, like I didn't realize it until... You know, he has this, literally he has a house studio. It's a house that's just, every room is now a studio in the house. Wow. And I walked in and I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, how, like how all of these are set. He's yeah. got plaques upon plaques upon plaques. And I was just like, you know, stuff that you listen to, soundtracks of your life, yeah. you know, Nas, the Fugees, Lauren Hill, Jasmine Sullivan, you know, Amy Winehouse. and. He wanted to work with me while we were working. He heard something in my voice. He was just like, you know, nobody's really heard you do that before. Mm -hmm. And I'd never really been able to do it because I loved, you know, I love R&B music, 90s R&B. I grew up listening to Mariah and Whitney and Joe and Babyface and Boys to Men. And like, I was never able to get that R&B part out because it seemed a little mature for me at the time. Yeah. Does that make sense? So he was like, nobody's been able to hear that. And I was like, I would love to do this. So we started working on it. And um, then we, we started working on the album and I've, I've moved over now to his label called Louder Than Life. And we started working on the album and he finally asked me, or he was the first person to ask me rather, like, what do you want to say? What do you want it to sound like? Yeah. And nobody had really asked me that before. So to go into the studio with that type of freedom was just absolutely incredible. And Salam, you know, he was there every step of the way, you know, reaching out. And of course, Salam, Joe's, yeah, I'll just call them. And I'm like, of course, of course you have, you know, Babyface's number in your phone. It's cool, <laughs> like whatever, you can just call him up. Um, so it was amazing, like the people that I got to work with and, and collaborate with. And this whole experience has been so amazing and he's a really big part of that. Um, okay, so obviously everybody knows that you're with Mr. Uh, Sage the Gemini. Yes. Yes. He is so adorable. Yes, he is. With his little greenish hazily eyes. <laughs> yes. Um, and obviously, we I, like, I've seen and we've heard how you guys met. Mm -hmm. um, and that he was really nervous to meet you. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that so? Uh, isn't that kind of weird? You're like, oh my god, you're a nervous me? Well, it was it was mutual actually, because listen, Red Nose has been like my favorite song for like the past couple years. Oh my god, let me find out your hood rat on the low. Listen, I'm flashing. <laughs> I'm classy ratchet. A good song comes on, I can't help but dance. Okay, yeah. but I'll be like in the corner, but it's still classy. I'm classy with it. Um, but no, that's been like one of my favorite songs that's come out in the past couple years. And so when I was working on the mixtape with Salam, yeah. hashtag by Felicia. Bye. You can download it now if you'd like um i was doing this song and it was called gasoline and the beat and everything i was just like i want to put sage gemini on it i'm a big fan of his and so salam reached out or actually what happened was i had commented that i loved red nose on twitter he saw it started following each other and um then i reached out and i said hey who can i reach out to for a feature and he sent over a number but didn't put a name and i was like it's probably his number. Here you go, Salam. Like here, call call him. Yeah. Um, because I'm not I'm not like that. I just don't do that. So um he did his part and then I was like, it's kinda empty. He should come in and do some ad libs. And that's when we met. He came to the studio to just fill in some parts and both of us, it was just mutual, like we're both fans of each other. He watched me on Idol and yeah, so he's known. He watched the girl too. So yeah, she... so it was just like it was kinda crazy, but it was one of those things where I looked at him and I was like, huh. Okay, like I was cool, <laughs> I was cool like on the outside, like hi, it's so nice to meet you, but yeah. on the inside I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> but he's a great guy, he's just like, he's very, very sweet, he's really thoughtful, he has one of the biggest hearts of anybody I've ever met. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it doesn't hurt that he's very nice to look at. Yeah. Um, and also, for me, I'm I'm five ten and I'm like six feet and up in heels, and he just makes me feel so tiny. He's six five. So I didn't realize he was that tall. Yeah, he's Jesus very tall, Christ. but he's a very he's a very good guy. So like. I love him for who he is, and the the looks and everything else is just a bonus. Yeah. He's just, he's great. Hey guys, it's me, Jordan Sparks, and you are watching GlobalGrind.com.